A Karen creates chaos during my flight, insisting that I shouldn't have received a first-class upgrade because I'm a soldier. In her rage, she forcibly takes my belongings. But she's about to learn that messing with a Marine has its consequences. Here's what happened when I decided to defend my rights. So I'm 20 years old, and I had just got back from Afghanistan about a week ago and was heading home on my post-deployment leave to surprise my father. He did not know I was back. When I got to the check-in counter, the lady told me that my flight was delayed due to mechanical issues and that they were trying to find a new plane for the flight. This is important later. Four hours later, I am boarding my flight. Now the original plane did not have a first-class row, but the new plane did, and no one was seated in them. As a veteran, they allowed me and a few others to board the flight first. Once seated, I put my headphones in and waited for the flight to depart. After the flight was loaded, the flight attendant came on the speaker to tell everyone that the flight had the entire first-class section open and that they would select seats at random to give people free upgrades for the flight. This is where everyone started to ask for the upgrade, some even getting belligerent demanding an upgrade. I didn't mind my seat and honestly did not expect to get selected for the upgrade. But as the lady was going around listening to people bugging her for an upgrade, she came up to me. Excuse me, sir, would you like to be upgraded to first class? Really? That would be great. I've never sat in first class before. Well, it's your lucky day. Grab your carry-on and I'll show you to your new seat. As I'm collecting my belongings, the passenger behind my seat went hysterical. Karen screams, What makes him so special that you gave him the upgrade? The flight attendant responds, Ma'am, the selection was random and his seat was selected. That's bullshit! He already got to enter the plane before me and my daughter even though I was zone A. How much more does he need? Ma'am, I'm sorry. It was random. I speak to the attendant. It's okay. I can sit in my normal seat and she can have the upgrade. Karen screams. My daughter needs an upgrade too then. Just give her a random upgrade too. Ma'am, the seats have already been selected. I can't remove someone else for your daughter. You'll have to stay in your seat. At this point, the flight attendant took me to the first class seat and I sat down. She asked me if I wanted anything to drink and that everything was complimentary. So I ordered a beer and a bag of chips and put my headphones in to enjoy my one and only time in first class. Fast forward to being in the air. An hour has gone by and I'm asleep when I feel someone tapping me on the shoulder. I wake up and it's the crazy passenger from before. Karen whispers, I'll take your seat now. Um, well, I'm already settled and the flight attendant already told you no. Okay, how about you get out of the seat right now? I'm a mother, so give it to me. I'm agitated at this point. With all due respect, no, I'm just going to stay here. After that, Karen leaves and I put my headphones back in. A few minutes later, Karen returns and pulls my headphones out of my head. You're going to give me the seat. She then collects my phone and Kindle off of the tray and stands up. Now I'm furious because she just yanked my headphone off and took my belongings, so I get the flight attendant's attention and explain what's going on. Ma'am, please return to your seat. I don't want this to escalate any further. This is fucking ridiculous. Just because he's a soldier doesn't mean he should get his dick sucked by everyone. I'm a Marine, by the way. Karen then threw my belongings on my lap pretty hard, but I just sat there quietly until she went back to her seat. I apologized to the flight attendant for all the trouble, and she told me situations like this is why they never really give free upgrades during a flight. The rest of the flight went normal, and I was able to surprise my dad. Woo, buckle up fam, cause this flight's hit some serious Karen turbulence. Can you believe her audacity? I mean, what makes him so special? Uh, I don't know Karen, maybe serving our country? Then she proceeds to snatch our brave OP stuff, thinking motherhood equals free passes. Hold on my dudes, it gets wilder. She goes full ballistic mode, lobbing belongings, hurling insults, all in the name of entitlement. This right here folks, is Karen in all her first class chaotic glory. But hey, let's give it up for our patient, understanding OP and his A-plus military discipline. A Karen's obsession with homeopathic remedies nearly cost my wife her life when she tried to stop her from receiving life-saving treatments during a medical crisis. Her abusive behavior and dangerous beliefs only worsened as she stayed with us, leading to a near-fatal accident after her passing. Here's what happened. Allow me to introduce you to my late mother-in-law. I'll call her Carol for the sake of variety. Though I've heard many stories about her, for the most part, I'll stick with things that I witnessed myself. There are enough of them. I don't think Carol ever met a New Age concept that she didn't like. Her expressed goal was to synthesize all religion, science, and mysticism into a unified whole. All of it. To this end, she amassed a large collection of books and stranger objects from her travels, with an especial focus on healing. Her library had volumes about vibration manipulation, curative trampolining, homeopathic color therapy, and on and on. I am not joking or exaggerating here. 
Her shelves had lots of admittedly pretty mineral crystals, along with bottles of magic goddess essence water, evaporated away, and bogus radon protectors powered by diagrams of geometric figures. Her favorite book, based on the number of annotations and sticky notes, was hundreds of pages of word salad about spiritual beings from the star Arcturus, that's Arcturus, spelled with an H, because of H-bar, Planck's constant from physics. Except that Planck's constant is denoted by H, and H-bar is the reduced Planck's constant. It's important to get the details right when you're dealing with spiritual beings. Her pentagonal home was custom-built around an energy vortex that she discovered in the coastal peaks of British Columbia. Carol's parenting was, how shall I put this, more darkly eccentric. She was physically and emotionally abusive to her children. One still has some pencil lead embedded in his hand, from when she stabbed him because she wasn't satisfied with his piano practice. She attacked one with a kitchen knife. She started slut-shaming her daughter, later my wife, as soon as she grew breasts, for growing breasts. So she forced her daughter to wear two large bathing suits, with the apparent intention of making said breasts look smaller by contrast, but with the actual effect that there were wardrobe malfunctions. She was ashamed that her daughter went into medicine and became a noted specialist, rather than supporting her own non-traditional medical work. My wife got the hell out at age 17 and moved across the country to go to university. For most of the time after that, she went relatively low contact. A decade ago, my wife suffered from a surgical error which resulted in abdominal sepsis and asked me to call her mother. That made me understand just how deathly serious the situation was. I was to call in the family for what might be the last time. I hadn't grasped that her life was truly at risk until that point. Nothing less would have induced her to try to get her mother to visit. To her credit, Carol hurried out, for what was supposed to be a couple of weeks. It was expected that in that time, my wife would be either dead or on the road to recovery. Carol stayed in our home, and at first things didn't go too badly. For the most part, we just didn't talk about the treatments that my wife was undergoing. Carol did express concern about the antibiotics that were being given, since according to her own views, antibiotics did nothing but harm. But a couple of weeks stretched into a couple of months, and Carol became harder to live with. She was angry when I stroked my wife's hair with my hand because I was blocking the energy from her chakra. She started blaming me for having somehow caused the nausea that the botched surgery was supposed to cure. I drove her out to pick up a magical concoction of essential oils on the condition that she check with one of the doctors before applying them. I pointed out that if the mixture had the power to heal, then it also had the power to cause harm, which Carol denied. When we got back to the hospital, I nabbed one of the residents when we reached my wife's floor to ask about that. Carol became furious about that, and it was clear that she had had no intention of talking with the doctors. At home, she became more abusive to me. She was claiming that I was abusing my wife by not letting her have her things in the house. At that point, I lost my temper, the first time I'd yelled at a person in literally a couple of decades. I told her that almost everything in sight was actually her daughter's, displacing my stuff. The sofas, the piano, tables and chairs, the bookshelves, and the electronics. The shelves for the CDs and DVDs were mine, but half the contents were hers. Carol wanted to know if I'd be continuing the herbal remedies after she left, and I told her that that was up to my wife. I'd continue them if she wanted. I'd stop them if she preferred. Carol screamed that I was abusing my wife by following her own wishes rather than her mother's. On the night before Carol was finally supposed to be heading out, I was restless. That particular nightmare was about to end, but my wife was still quite ill. I got to thinking about that essential oil mixture, which included both oil of cloves and oil of cinnamon. Those are both strongly irritating if left on the skin, and Carol had been painting my wife's feet with the stuff. Her feet were apparently the correct energy points to draw out the infection. I went online and found the manufacturer's instructions, which specified that the oil needed to be significantly diluted with some neutral oil if it was going to be applied to the skin. Carol hadn't even been using the stuff properly. Well, that explained why the skin on my wife's feet was yellow and starting to peel, but Carol was furious when I calmly pointed out the problems that she was creating, out of ignorance. A few days after Carol left, my wife took a turn for the worse and had to go back into the intensive care unit, and I dreaded the phone call that I had to make, not because of the bad news but because I anticipated how Carol would react. And she didn't disappoint. If you really loved her, you'd put her back onto the herbal oil and stop the antibiotics, you know perfectly well they don't do a damn lick of good. At which point I hung up. I had other things to worry about. My wife pulled through after months in hospital and three stays in ICU. She's still in poor health. I told her that I was putting my foot down. Under no circumstances was her mother welcome under my roof again. She had grossly abused her privileges as a house guest.
I didn't care about the family custom that family members were always welcome to stay as guests. I would not stay under the same roof as her mother. Having heard my stories, and based on her own experiences, my wife agreed. A few years ago, Carol died, much as she had lived. She was diagnosed with metastasized lung cancer. Although she did undergo some real medical therapies, she relied mostly on her quack remedies, pawpaw twig powder, whey protein, immune boosters, and the like. The usual crap that ethics-free swindlers pawn off on desperate sufferers. She firmly believed that all the little white spots on her lung x-rays were a good sign, and that her rapid weight loss indicated that her boosters were draining the cancer away. If there's some existence after death, I hope she came to appreciate all of the harm that she did in life. Except, a couple of nights after she passed away, I was driving from the hospital back to the Energy Vortex house. The rental car's navigation device suggested a shorter route than I'd taken to get there. But that route turned into a back road, into a rough road in the hills, into a track through the forest, and, in pitch darkness apart from my headlights, over a rocky bump and directly into a tree trunk. Luckily, I was traveling slowly and stopped in time. As I paused, shaken, I got to wondering if there might be something to Carol's worldview after all, and if her vengeful spirit might have possessed the GPS device, making one last try at killing me. Oh my goodness, this story is wild. OP's mother-in-law, Carol, was something else entirely. The fact that she was physically and emotionally abusive to her children is horrifying enough, but the new age stuff she was into just takes it to another level. The fact that she believed antibiotics did more harm than good and then proceeded to paint OP's wife's feet with undiluted essential oils is just crazy. And then the fact that she tried to tell OP to stop the antibiotics and go back to the herbal oil when his wife was in the ICU is just mind-boggling. I don't blame OP one bit for not wanting her under his roof ever again. What do you guys think? Have you ever had to deal with a Karen like Carol before? An entitled Karen mother says I'm too old to have asthma and tries to steal my inhaler. So, a bit of backstory, I'm a teenage girl living in Central Florida. Florida is really hot, like, all the time. It's in the high 80s and I'm at a park with sports fields since I play softball. We were practicing on a Tuesday evening so there were tons of little kids at the playground. We were practicing running the bases properly and sliding into the bases. For everyone who doesn't know, when you slide, you basically kick one of your legs out putting the opposite one behind that leg making a four shape. You slide across the clay on the ground to make it harder for the other team to tag you out. If you do it wrong, you could get hurt easily. Now I may be an older softball player, but I've never actually learned how to slide. So me being a clumsy person ended up twisting the leg that was supposed to be straight around and smacking my left knee, facing the wrong way, into the hard clay. It made a popping sound, and I dislocated it at the very least. It hurt a lot, I was crying, and my dad wasn't present because he went to get a soda from Circle K. My teammates put me on the closet park bench, which was right outside the playground, so it would be easier for my dad to pick me up to get to a doctor. We didn't go to the ER because we don't have health care and didn't think it was serious enough. I'm done crying, but I'm very scared as I've never hurt my knees and I'm hoping it's not serious. I have asthma, but not super serious. I only use my inhaler during sports, during PE, or when I'm having an anxiety attack. I had my inhaler in my softball bag, and my softball best friend gets it for me since I'm having an anxiety attack over one of my knees being dislocated. I'm breathing in the medicine and trying to calm down when we meet the entitled mother and her kids. The older one, 10, 11, stops and looks at me, probably because my knee looks weird, my eyes are red from crying, and he might not know what an asthma inhaler is. The younger kid and her mom continued walking, but stopped when they noticed the brother wasn't with them. They walk over to me and begin talking. The mother asks us what's going on and my best friend let her know that I'd hurt my leg in practice. Karen snapped back asking why I'm not in hospital and my friend let her know that's none of her business. This is the point her kid entered the scene as she'd spotted my inhaler and started screaming asking what it is. As he's just a kid I stayed calm and told her that it's an inhaler that's used by asthmatics to which the entitled rat responded by yelling that she wants it. She would not stop saying that he wants it not processing anything that I told him, whereas one of the other kids was very sweet and innocent and butted in telling the spoiled kid that it's not hers to use. She wasn't having any of it, and kept insisting that it's her inhaler. I'm utterly confused at this point, and wondering how long it takes to get a soda 10 minutes away and get back. I thought the kid had given up by now, but she came back not a minute or two later and screamed, Give me my puffer back! I was in too much pain to argue, so my best friend took the lead once again letting her know that it's not her inhaler. 
Now her mom butted back into the conversation telling us that if we don't give her daughter her favorite toy back then, she will call the police on us. My friend called her crazy, and Karen muttered like a typical Karen would, How rude! Teenagers have no respect for adults these days. Now entitled mother grabs the inhaler from my hand. I'm shocked into the point of more tears. I start gasping for breath because I'm terrified she's going to run off and I won't be able to breathe. Thankfully, my friend was quick to respond and yelled, WTF do you think you're doing? Karen wasn't trying to run off and kept arguing, saying she's taking her daughter's toy back from the annoying teenagers. At this point, my dad finally runs up and tells me to get up to leave. My best friend quickly summed up what had happened and informed my dad that Karen had my inhaler. My dad is very level-headed so he calmly just asked, please could you give it back? Karen didn't change her story and said, it's not hers, it belongs to my daughter, she's too old to have asthma anyway. Now my dad may be level-headed, but he is not a small guy. He's six six inches and broad. He used to be an Air Force officer and looks pretty scary sometimes. A switch flicked in his head at this point and he snapped letting Karen know that she is one of the stupidest people he's ever met. Karen lived up to his statement as she said that she should be pressing charges as me and my friend stole her daughter's favorite toy. The innocent kid actually interrupted her saying it's not true and that her mother had stolen it. My dad was losing patience and asked again to please return the inhaler so he could go and treat his daughter who's injured. The mother claimed that I'm just exaggerating and not actually injured. My dad snapped back calling her the B word and demanding the inhaler back. Karen now drops the racist and sexist card along with saying, You men think you own everything. I'm white. Her family is white. How is that racist? Karen and my dad start yelling and arguing and I'm gasping for breath still. I hadn't been paying attention to the innocent kid and I hadn't seen him for a while, but now stood in front of me with my inhaler. Bless him, he had seen I was struggling and this little angel took my inhaler from his little sister and was handing it to me. I was so grateful I hugged the kid after getting my breathing back to normal. As soon as Karen saw this, she screamed at the top of her lungs, Stop assaulting my son! I'm so sick of this lady that I just stare. Entitled kid is crying, the mother is furious, an innocent kid just says run. My best friend motions to my dad to pick me up and go, so that's what we do. The sweet child tried to hold back his mom, which surprisingly worked because this kid was pretty tall and his mom was pretty small, and my softball coach came out to help him. We made it to a walk-in clinic, and they popped my knee back in. Currently, we don't know what's still wrong with it, and we're going for a MRI. What a terrible woman this mother sounds like. I don't understand why some people think that their kids are just entitled to anything and everything they want. When they grow up, they'll realize that's not how the world works, but this should be taught to them by parents so that they're prepared, not going around stealing people's inhalers. I'm really glad you had your best friend by your side and that she was brave enough to speak up for you whilst you was in an uncomfortable position. It's almost like a miracle that a mother so evil could make a child so sweet with great awareness and common sense. He must have some good influences in his life that have thankfully prevented him from turning out entitled like his mother and sister. I really hope your injury isn't too serious and you can go back to enjoying the sports you love as soon as possible.